everybody, I'm Oliver Hines, aka Dominos from MetalUnderground.com and I'm very happy and indeed honoured to say we're here with Orphan Land, all the way from Israel. How are you? How was your flight? Very happy to be here. Fine. Good. Good. You got so here happy. safe? Yeah, yeah troubling days. Uh, always exhausting, but always happy to be here. It's better than staying home. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know you just played Vargas in Portugal. How was that? It was a great show. Uh, Portugal is always a welcoming country. We headlined the stage that we played, so it's, it's a two headline festival that we're doing now. It feels really great. Good. Uh, it was a great show. Portuguese people are amazing. And, and yeah. Happy to be here now. Looking forward for tonight. I've never been. I lived in Spain for two years, but I never went to Portugal. You should. It's an amazing, beautiful country. Really. Yeah, I've heard. Well, the last time we spoke, you couldn't say much about a new album. Now the new album is out. It's been out for a few months now. Um, Unsung Prophets and Dead Messiahs. It's a really strong album. It's, it takes a lot to follow an album like All Is One. And you've obviously taken a lot of time and care to make sure that it's a worthy successor. And I think you've done that very effectively. So congratulations on that. Yeah. Well, Thank you so much. But uh, one thing I really like about it is the artwork. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the artwork, who um, created it, and some of the symbolism involved in it? We wanted to make a tribute for the way governments design money. Lots of lines, thick lines, uh, and, and we took a lot of elements from the American dollar. Uh, because money is always... Money is the biggest god yes. of our world. Everybody worship money. Take their decision based on money. Um, countries will invade other countries because of money. They will let go. They will leave children to die because of money. It's always about money. And uh, so we used a lot of motives of our world today. Weapons pointed at your face. Uh, the all-knowing eye yes. looking at everything. The pyramid and the bombs falling on a book, you know, burning books and stuff like that. That, that was the purpose of, of the cover, basically. We literally had that in England last week. Right. It was a group of fascists stormed the socialist bookshop, tore books out, all this kind of thing. Oh, wow. So, so that's so nice. it's getting shittier everywhere. Oh, yeah. Don't worry, it's not just the Middle East. <laughs> it's we're not all unique for the Middle East. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're all far past fucking well, I'm not shit. happy about it, but, but yeah, it's, <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, but um, so this will be my third time seeing Orphan Land today, and that each time before has been excellent, so I'm really looking forward to it. And what's great today is being able, because it's a festival, there's going to be so many new people being able to see you. I'm dragging everyone I can to come and see you. So, um, for those that are not too familiar, what would you say is the direct message, if you like, of Orphan Land? <laughs> Keep going, yeah. <laughs> um, um, you know, we started the band 27 years ago. Coming from the Middle East, we realized that touching those topics from the Middle East would be a great contribution to the metal scene because singing about mythologies, trying to sound like a British band or an American band would not do any good if you come from the Middle East. We have our own things to deal with. So I would say Orphan Land, the name, the title of the band is a paraphrase to a holy land, a promised land. Because what holiness left if blood is falling on a land? If you take something holy, like a cross or a Bible, and you throw it into a toilet, where's the holiness? It Holy smells shit. like shit now, right? Um, I, I'd say that, that we are touching these subjects, but never in a manner of taking sides. We never, we're very political, very protesting, but we're not saying you're right, you're wrong. We're saying yeah. everybody's wrong. Yeah. Well, the world isn't black and white, it's different yeah, shades yeah, of grey. Yeah, there's a lot of grey in the middle, yeah. and, and that's what we're trying to say to people from all sides. People are always trying to realize what side do we belong. You will never be able to find that, because music is universal. Yes. The, the, the hardest enemies, they can share the, the same love for the same band. So music is universal, why would we take ourselves down to be in the favor of one side and not the other? Yeah. And, and we think that you can, it's not black and white, like you said. So Orphanland is dealing with those actual subjects coming from the Middle East, 
Jews versus Arabs, fascism in general in the whole world, the fact that people worship reality TV, dealing with the ass of Kim Kardashian, uh, reading about, I don't know, Ronaldo, while they don't know that every year 90,000 kids are being kidnapped in India, yeah. alone. No one tells about it, no one cares about it, no one deals with it. We are drugged with TV, with gossip, with news. And this is the problem that we have with our world. It's the brainwash and the fact that we are in this huge slumber and we don't get it. So this is basically what we're trying to do. Well, like you say, there is such a, um, a focus on unity and peace and whatever, which is wonderful. And we spoke before about how it's, um, there was a campaign to get you guys nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize, and rightly so. But um, the thing that stands out to me is your dedication to make sure that your music is still heard in Arab countries and people can get access to it and this kind of thing. And one thing that stood out to me is that I'm not sure if this is your last festival of the summer or... We have two more coming two up more, next week. But either way, after the festivals, your next gig is in Turkey. Yeah. And I've read that you have quite a history with Turkey and that at one point you were going to become Turkish citizens. I don't know if that's true. We applied for a citizenship, but right. we never got it. Oh, okay. The purpose war was that, that we wanted to reach all those Arab countries. I mean, imagine that Orphanland played 48 countries all over the world. We played in Australia, we played in China, we played in India, we played in Japan, we played in South America, but we didn't play next door. Where are all those people related to the subjects that we're dealing with? Yeah. And, and we're a band that cannot meet and connect with all of its fans. And that's tragic in a way. Yeah. So we tried to apply for a Turkish citizenship, hope, hoping we would get it. And then we will be able to go to those countries as Turkish citizens. Yeah. And it would have been great for Turkey because Turkey originally is supposed to stand up for this subject of coexistence. But we didn't get it in the end. And uh, But we did get three peace awards from Turkey. Oh, that's okay then. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and one can always try. I mean, like I said, in 27 years, you know, we've played in so many places. Yeah. I will always try. I don't mind applying for a, a, a British citizenship as long as I can go to those countries. Yeah. Anyone that would give us a passport so that we will be able to go to, I don't know, Egypt, Syria, Jordan. So they just not let you in? Not as Israelis, Israelis in a way, right. because of politics. Of course, we're Israelis, but just a matter to cross the border and to have a show without problems. I'd be happy to do it. Okay. Yeah. I'll adopt you guys and then you can All right. If you, if you have connections. Yeah. <laughs> can, you, can you get married in England with five guys? Uh, well, let's find out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Cool. And that would, that would, but that would be great to see. I mean, you guys, because there's a lot of underground metal in the Arab countries as well. I mean, yeah. I don't know how. I don't think that that underground. But for example, we mentioned Turkey, and they've got Pentagram there or Mizrahabal, as they're known outside of Turkey. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know there's at least one really good Egyptian band. There's a, there's a few in Morocco. There's a, um, there's a lot of bands in Egypt, and uh, there is a huge metal scene in Egypt. And uh, they really struggle because it's very hard to be a metalhead in a very conservative country. Yes. They tend to think that you're a Satanist while you're not. Mm. But just because you have a t shirt with a skull yeah. saying, uh, I don't know, Slayer, yeah. they automatically go that way. And uh, But there are many bands coming from Jordan, Egypt, Syria, yeah. and they do good music, but. They have difficulties to produce themselves, to, to get out. It took us 14 years to travel overseas with Orphan Man. Yeah. 14 years till the first show out of Israel. So for them it's even a few levels harder than, than it was for us. Yeah. It was in Turkey, by the way. <laughs> first show was in Turkey. Yeah. Very cool. cool. I mean, did, they, did you kind of have a foot in your door? Because the first album is the Sultan Ahmed Mosque. Yeah. So they kind of went, oh, they're okay. Yeah, they're and, I, and I think that the Oriental elements, so they connected with it very fast, like they yeah. did with Merzar Kabul that you mentioned, yeah. and Pentagram. Um, so I think that there are a lot of similarities of the Turkey for the Turkish people and the Israelis. Yeah. Uh, we live in a so-called secular country. We have a lot of uh, connection to our heritage and religion in a way. I find many 
similarities between us and them, so maybe that was the reason why they connected immediately with our music. Well, one thing I'd, I'd like to ask you about, you can feel free to tell me to fuck off, um, is the nation-state law. The what? The nation-state law in Israel. We, we don't really get the full story over here. We're either told it's great or it's not. Could you explain a little bit about that and how it affects you and your workings as a band, if mean, at all? You mean the political situation, the government? Yeah. Well, the situation in Israel is always, always very fragile. And uh, it's very hard to explain. I, I, would, I would always say to everyone, you cannot judge this place, you need to visit. It's so complicated to understand all sides, all angles of the story. You need to be there. It's very confusing. Brainwash is huge all over the Middle East. This place is full of weapons all over. I mean, just imagine the United States is trying to do peace in the Middle East while, that said, still being the biggest supplier of weapons to all sides. Look how complicated that. We're number two, by the way. Yeah. yeah. And so imagine how complicated is that. Yeah. And try to figure out the whole picture from the Bible, from religion aspect, from political aspect, from the wars aspect. It's, it's crazy. There's no way I can speak about it for a few minutes to let, to let well, everyone yeah. understand. But all I can say is that if you have an opinion, if you're pro-Israel, if you're pro-Palestinian, it doesn't matter. It's all based on a brainwash. Yeah. You need to be there, you need to talk to the people to realize that everybody is wrong. Yeah. The, There's the, no right and wrong. Yeah. The, the best um, stance, I guess, to take is to just be pro-human. So, of course. Talk to the people. Um, I don't like politicians. I like no. the people. Well, yeah, this is yeah. it. I mean, for example, um, a few years back, Johnny Rotten from the Sex Business was playing in Israel, and there was some people saying, oh, why are you playing in Israel? They said, because I'm not playing for Netanyahu or the politicians, I'm playing for the people that are there. Yeah. Of course. I never never connected with Roger Waters' idea to boycott Israel, because I find it very double standard and hypocrite. I mean, it's not the only place with bad things. No, of course not. I'll give him the credit that horrible things are happening in Israel, but they're also happening uh, anywhere in the Middle East. Yeah. And South America. Yeah, but let's stay in Israel for a second. Let's say let's say you're a homosexual. Let's say you're an Arab homosexual. Where will be the safest place for you to be? Israel. Tel Aviv, I guess. Because no one will kill you there. Being a homosexual. Uh, in, in some Arab countries, a woman being raped is forced to marry her rapist. I cannot boycott the Arab world because of their human rights violations, because I will boycott my fans. What does that have to do with anything? I mean, yeah, bad things are happening everywhere, Israel included. But I don't think that boycott, I don't think that focusing on Israel is making any difference. I think there is a, an obsession, a small obsession. You can see the coverage of the Israeli-Palestinian uh, conflict compared to the civil war in Syria, where half a million people died, including more than 50,000 children. What makes Israel and the Palestinian more special? I guess the the focus on Israel and Palestine boils down to religion. Everyone wants to argue about religion, has we've done since the yeah, well, well, So that's why there's so much focus. It's not fair. No, it's, you know not, fair. it's not fair for the Syrians. No, it's I know not that. fair for the, the kidnapped child children in India. Yeah. I'm not saying that Israel is a saint. You have to remember that. Bad things are happening. I live in Israel. Yes. But focusing as if this is the only place on earth with bad things, yeah. that's even bread. Yeah. That's what it is. No, no, I'm not saying that. Of course you're not. No, I'm, I'm saying about people who are. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know you've uh, a few more interviews to do, so thank you ever so much for taking the time. Thanks for having us, man. You're very welcome.